Hey guys, it's Carrie, and I am back with another cooking hack video. I hope you are enjoying these series of videos that I am doing. I am back with another three-parter right here, and this one is going to be centered around pizza. I'm going to be doing one video on the pizza sauce that I make, another video on the dough that I am making, and a third video on making the pizza. Now, my my favorite pizza is just like a margarita cheese pizza with one exception. I don't like basil. But I will tell you, when we get to the pizza making portion of this uh, three-parter series, you can add whatever toppings that you want. So in this first video, I'm going to be showing you the sauce that I am making and how I store the sauce. So that is the hack right there, is to make your sauce ahead of time and store it in smaller containers that give you one to two uses or one to two pizzas out of that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you don't mind, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. These are all the ingredients I use for my pizza sauce. It's also the base layer of spaghetti sauce that I make and uh, vegetarian or vegan chili and tomato soup. So I start off with this base for a lot of things, but what you see right here is pretty much all for my pizza sauce. So this is the brand of tomato paste that I use. And I don't know really how to pronounce it, but it's like Merglin or Murglin um, organic tomato paste. This is the best brand of tomato products I have ever used. And I've used a lot of different ones of them. I've got an onion right here. This is a sweet onion, and that's probably like a medium size one. I don't think that's a small one, but about medium size. Um, this is the garlic paste that I made a couple days ago, so I need to go ahead and use it, and that's why I'm making my sauce right now. I've got some olive oil right here. This is my favorite brand you can get at the grocery store. I love the California Olive Ranch. I've got some kosher. Uh, coarse salt. I love this salt right here. It's my favorite kind. And I've got some brown sugar. And that might seem like it's really odd, but I find that anytime you're using a lot of tomato products, you need a little bit of sugar to help with the flavor. And I prefer brown sugar over granulated white sugar. This is just what I prefer. So, um, it may seem a little bit odd, but this is what I love. Now, if you're into other spices and herbs, feel free to add some basil in there. I personally just hate the flavor of basil, but feel free to do that. Or if you maybe want to do some oregano, something like that. Um, whatever, you know, go for that. But this is my base layer. I absolutely love it. It is sweet. So if you are off sugar and you're trying to do something else, um, I would definitely leave the sugar out. But I can taste the difference without it. But I just wanted to let you guys know that's what I do. And so once I have all of this cooked and ready to go, I'll show you how I store it. So this is how I store it in the freezer, and this is my biggest kitchen hack for this pasta sauce or pizza sauce. These are about a half a cup size little containers, and I will be washing these before I use them, but I just went and picked up some more because I've somehow they just get old and disgusting later and get warped, so you do have to replace them every so often but I've got some more so I'll make this and then put roughly a half a cup in each one and I can get two pizzas usually out of one of these containers so this is my kitchen hack right here for my pizza sauce is storing these and storing it in these containers and freezing it and then when you're ready to make a homemade pizza you just grab one of these containers and your sauce is all ready to go so it will take a little bit of your time but utilize that time roughly one one day a week whenever you have it and make your stuff at that point when you are then when you're ready to cook all your stuff will be ready and it won't take you no time I'm gonna start by chopping this onion and just to let you know I'm gonna do it off camera just it saves time and um, it's also awkward for me to film and chop this at the same time so I am gonna go ahead and do this next and then I'll I just chopped that one onion up and then I remembered that I needed some uh, sauteed onions for something else that I'm going to be filming and cooking. Um, 
So I got, I had this piece of onion in a Ziploc bag in the refrigerator, so I'm going to go ahead and chop this one too, saute them all at the same time, and then take out what I'm going to use for my other dish. And that one is going to be just hint, hint. Um, it's going to be for like some meal prepping and um, to make my life easier during the week. So um, I'm doing two birds with one stone basically with this onion. I've got my Dutch oven right here. I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil to the um, pan and I'll probably end up adding a little bit more later. I definitely like a lot of olive oil in this recipe so I'm going to go ahead and add my onions to it. And so this is definitely way more than I need for my pizza sauce that I'm making. So one other thing I would definitely suggest as well, if you know you're going to need more onion and that needs to be chopped, do it at the same time so you don't have to do it later. It saves you so much time to have some in reserve. And just store it in the refrigerator. It'll keep for a few days. I wouldn't do it for weeks and weeks at a time, but definitely uh, two or three days will be just fine. I'm going to go ahead and just start sauteing this now and just wait till they get kind of translucent and I'll come back and check in with you guys. I've been sauteing these on about medium heat. I'm going to go ahead and turn it down to low because I don't want them to burn. So right now it's on low. I already removed some of the onions for my other recipe that I'm doing and I just put them in this bowl. And I will tell you the other recipe if you want to come back and watch that one or maybe come back and watch this one because I'm not sure which one I'm putting up first. Um, I'm making hamburgers that I'm doing meal prep on the other one. So um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and add my garlic paste. And this is garlic paste that I made about a day and a half ago. Um, it's been in my refrigerator. I don't want to leave it in there much longer, so I'm going to go ahead and utilize it. It's right here. I like a lot of garlic. And this is roasted garlic. It's a much more mild flavor than just raw garlic. And that was about equivalent to one head of garlic, I would say. And so. If you want to roast your own garlic, uh, what I do is chop a garlic clove, the whole head of garlic in half, not a clove, the whole head of garlic in half, and then what I will do is pour some olive oil and then, well, wrap some foil around it, pour olive oil in it, and roast it in the oven on a really low temperature. I think around 285 Fahrenheit is a good temperature. If you're going to go up a little bit higher, just make sure you check on it. Um, every 15 minutes or so and you don't want it to get too dark so when it's just kind of um, soft pull it out of the oven leave it wrapped up in that foil and then just let it sit for an hour or so and it will just continue to soften up so right now that is looking good what I'm going to go ahead and do at this point is add some salt to it and a little goes a long way in my opinion so I do a little bit at a time and then I'm going to go ahead and add some of the brown sugar to it got my salt right here. I've got to tell you, I just eyeball it. I just pour some in my hand, about that much. I would say that's probably a teaspoon, and I'll just do that. And then what you're going to want to do is put a little bit of a time, then get all your ingredients in there, and then um, incorporate everything and let it cook, and then come back and taste it to see if you need more salt. I'm someone that doesn't like stuff really, really salty, um, but just do it to your taste. And this, I will be honest with you guys, I'm not trying to hide anything. I like a lot of brown sugar, but we're going to start out with a smaller amount first. That's probably equivalent to a half of a tablespoon. I may that put, let's just go ahead and put a little bit more, let's be honest. So I've got about a tablespoon in there right now. That's completely guesstimation on my part. And then I will do, again, get everything added and um, let it simmer a little bit and then come back and taste it. I do like to just cook this a little bit before I add the tomatoes paste in here and get all those flavors incorporated. Alright, I think we're good. Let me move some of this stuff back. Alright, I went ahead and removed or, or used the can opener and removed the lids of those. So I'm just putting these in here now. 
And I've got um, six of these. And once I get everything in here, I'm probably going to let it simmer on, very, on, on low. Uh, you want it really, really low, as low as you can get it. And I'm gonna, probably going to do that for about an hour or so, I would say. At least 30 minutes. And then you're going to let it cool. And then you can put it in your little storage containers when, once it's cool and then put those in the freezer. You want it to cool before you put those in the freezer because if you set them on top of anything that's frozen, it could start to thaw other things, which you don't want to do. And I'm thinking this will um, give me about six to eight of the little half a cup containers. And so that's six or, six or eight pizzas. We'll find out when we get to the end of the video, but that'll be, you know, potentially eight pizzas that I can make in the future where it's such time saving to do this. And plus, I don't have to order a pizza that I'm not a huge fan of. I can just make it myself, which I very much more, very much more, <laughs> that sounds funny, I much more enjoy my own cooking than a lot of restaurant cooking. And so also, I know what goes into the food if I'm cooking it. I don't know what the restaurant's doing. Okay, this does look like a lot, look like a lot, and it is. But remember, this is what we're doing. This is a kitchen hack, or cooking hack, I should say, not a kitchen hack, um, to make time easier in the future. Or save time in the future, I guess, would be the proper way. Hope y'all don't mind my rambling on here. At this point, I'm just going to stir this up, and you want to incorporate it as best as you can. And I'm also going to add a little bit more olive oil into it. And I just eyeball this as well, but I would say about a fourth of a cup is what you want. At this point, I'm going to leave this alone for a while and then come back and taste it once it's simmered on low for a little bit and then see if I need to add any more salt to the this recipe. So right now, I'm just waiting on that and then I'll taste it. So this is simmered about 30 minutes to an hour. And while this does take a bit of time, keep in mind this is to be utilized at a later date so this is the cooking hack and I've got some of my little containers laying out over here and these are the ones that I've had before they're not the new ones that I bought because I just put those in the dishwasher to wash um, so we're gonna see I've got six of these containers out where I'm just gonna go ahead and start filling them up this is a I think this is a fourth of a t uh, excuse me a fourth of a cup uh, measuring and it the size of it has worn off so I don't remember if this is a fourth or a third but I think it's a fourth so I'm gonna go ahead and just grab some and just start putting it in and I'm gonna do a little bit more than that and just kind of tap it down on whoops sorry I was gotten out of the viewfinder there I just tapped it down on the stove like that and then I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on now, I do prefer these containers. I like the fact that the lid screws on. I've got some of these other, these are the Glad ones right here where the top just fits on. And so, these are good too, but I like the other ones just a little bit better.
ended up with nine of them. So these are still very hot right here. I mean, I can touch them, but I'm going to go ahead and let them cool just on top of the stove right here. Or I may move them to another area of the kitchen and just let them cool down before I put them in the freezer. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Let me know if you try this recipe.